Good evening. Hello, Jay, Frida33. Hello, hello. Hey, Liz Girl Balls. Hey. Welcome in. I'm Dr. Myla Bennett. I'm a plastic surgeon who loves the Lord Jesus, and this is my nightly uh, Bible study. Hey, Mona Hero 7. Hello, Sheila Hair and Makeup Studio. If we are on a 40 days of faith journey, um, so this is the 40th day that, um, I, not the 40th day, I'm sorry. This is the 26th day of 40 of me coming on every night and sharing a word from the Lord. <laughs> um, YouTube and Facebook are slow just today coming in. Maybe I'm too late. It's kind of late. Guess they'll have to catch the replay. Hey, Angie 100. So I won't be long. I know I say that every night. Then we look up and it's an hour. But I don't think it's going to be long today. The message is kind of short and sweet. So let's pray. And then we can get rolling. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for getting us through another day, Lord. We thank you for another day of growing closer to you and getting to know you better, Father God. Lord, we thank you for protecting us and watching over us. We thank you for loving us despite our all the bad things that we do, Lord. We thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, so that we may live a life eternal. Lord, um, we thank you for your divine protection and being our fortress and strong tower. Lord, we thank you for your spirit that you have um, bless us with so that we can commune with you, Lord, and, and know what it is that you want for us and know what it is that you want us to do and all the things. Lord, I um, ask you during this study tonight to think through my mind and speak through my mouth. Lord, let the words that come from me be your words. Lord, minimize me and maximize you, Lord. I just want to give the message you want us to give. And Lord, I want to receive the message as well, Lord. I thank you for every person who was on there on this video, and I ask that you cover and protect all of their households. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. Hello, Denise James. Hello. So I wanted to talk a little bit about making sure we're in um, right standing with God. I think a lot of people think that they are. And um, I know a lot of people think that they are and they're doing what they think is right. Sorry. I know the yawning is contagious. It's 1139. Um, but a lot of people think that they're right. They think they're in right standing and they may not be. And right now um, we're in a, season where the Lord is righting wrongs, um, pulling down the wicked and gonna like, it's going to be a, it's going to be a changing of the guards. It's going to be, um, a, a shifting of the occupants of thrones and stuff like that. Right. And so he's pulling down the wicked. And so what happened, what, what I want, what I want you guys to um, pray to the Lord and ask is, are you good? Like, are you living in a way that's pleasing to him? Are you, is, has he been trying to get your attention about something that you've been missing? Because a lot of times we think we're in good standing with him and we're not. So I want to start off with, um, Matthew chapter seven, starting at verse 21. And I'm reading from the King James. Now, everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. <sighs> Sorry, Denise. <laughs> Just did it again. Okay, let me start over. Um, Matthew 7, verse 21. Now, everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? 
and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So there's that word again. We keep hearing about iniquities, 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 transgressions, and sin. Iniquity is wickedness. It is um, it's wickedness. It's doing things that's, it's like living a, a life of, like you're just living in sin. You're not just sending here and there, just kind of like in it, like you're, it's wickedness. Okay. And so we think we're doing something that's good, but the Lord sees it as wicked. So it said, he says that his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. Like we don't think like him. And so some of the things we, some of the stuff we're fighting for, huh? I'm so sorry. The yawning is ridiculous tonight. I'm not even more sleepy than usual or anything. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm really sorry. Um, some of the things that people are fighting really hard for, the Lord sees those things as abominations. And it's churches that's taking stands for some of these things. And the Lord literally sees it as an abomination, right? So then now you think you're doing, you're fighting a good fight for, for whatever people and people are missing the fact that where God love, he, well, he actually doesn't love everybody. He, he actually says that there's people that he hates. We're actually going to visit that verse, but he loves a lot of us. Okay. Even, even when we, even when we're doing these abom abominable things and that's why he tries to warn us to turn from it and give us a chance to fix it before he puts the smack down. Um, he gives us a chance. It says he's slow to anger, but when, once he does get angry, it's not, you don't, it's not good. Every, every time he got angry in here, it was really bad. Like he really will bring people to ruin if you, if he keeps warning you and he'll give you years to cut a fool. He'll give you a long time. And then all of a sudden he'll be like, that's it. And then you don't want to find out that you were walking wrong like that. You know, you don't want to, because I promise you, he warned you in a lot of different ways and you just missed it. So what I, what I will um, recommend people do is verse. Okay. We're, we're still in seven. We're still in uh, Matthew seven, but we're going to back up a little bit. Huh. To verse three. I'm going to read this from a different version. I'm going to read this from the ESV. Hold on. Let me get to it. That's upside down. That's not going to work. Okay. I'll start at verse one. Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So it's basically saying, however you judge people, that's the standard the Lord is going to use to judge you. Okay. All right. Next verse. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take that speck speck out of your eye when there is the log in your own eye you hypocrite first take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye so this is saying and this is what people do every day and it's so amazing because people have no idea that they're doing it that's the thing you're going to think you're not doing nothing wrong. I promise you, you're doing something that the Lord has been trying to warn you about and tell you to stop for a long time. I, every single person on here, I'm sure of it. Okay. And we'll be so focused on what's wrong with the next person. What's wrong with our husband? What's wrong with our kids? What's wrong with our siblings? What's wrong with our coworkers? What's wrong with our boss? 
we got the list this long of everything that they need to do to get right. You need to work on that list for yourself because you are worried about the log. I mean, the, the speck in their eye when there's a log in yours. So ask the Lord is what is the log in my eye? What have you been trying to show me? I promise you there's something so that you can get right so that you don't get up to the kingdom and Jesus is, is there and you like, Hey, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And he like, who are you? These people in that verse where they were like, we prophesied in your name. We cast out devils in your name. We perform um, miracles in your name. And he's like, who are you? They're doing all this stuff in the name of Jesus. This is church folk. This regular people in the streets is not running around prophesying and doing miracles. So he's literally, and doing it in Jesus name. So he's literally describing church folk. And then he proceeds to say, I don't know you. So you could be the pastor of the church. You could, you know, like, and be wrong and be not in a good space. So we need to ask the Lord, whatever, whatever, whatever log is in my eye that I've been missing that you've been trying to tell me, can you show me again? And now you be paying attention to perceive whatever God is trying to tell you to work on for yourself so that you could be in right standing. So that you don't end up leaving here thinking you're going one place and ending up somewhere else. Because that's eternal once you leave. Right now, God has given us a shot to make it right. And um, ain't nobody listening. That eclipse we just had a couple of days ago. There were so many parallels to Jonah. So many. And I'm sure y'all didn't heard them. It was a lot of stuff that was leading us to the book of Jonah. And so I believe that when that eclipse happened, it was like marking. It was like a countdown to, all right, y'all don't cut a fool. I'm about to, I'm about to turn, turn, like I'm about to humble y'all. Talking about the nation, America. So this is a time that God is giving us a chance, one last chance to repent before something crazy happens here. So I know I've been praying for our country. Um, I've been doing my best to try to hear God every day and do what he tells me and, and rectify what he tells me to rectify when he reveals things to me and all the things. I'm trying to work on myself and I'm trying to pray for our country. And sorry, I felt really led today to just ask to bring it to light that that there's things that God wants to wants you to stop doing um behave differently or whatever that you're missing and you need to start attending to those things so that you don't end up getting to the gates and finding out that Jesus is like I knew I know you beat it that's the last thing that you want there's so many people that think they're in good standing and God is like I did this is not what I told them to do it doesn't matter if you're doing all this stuff in the church, if that's not what he told you to do. If you're not doing what he told you to do, then you're in disobedience. You're like, you're that's what he told her to do and you doing it. So you need to make sure that you're doing what he wants you to be doing because there's different roles for all of us. But sometimes we appoint ourselves to stuff. We're like, this what I want. I want this. I want this. My this, my that. And he like, ain't nobody told you to do that. That's not what I wanted you to do. That's not what I made you for. Then in our ambition, a lot of us will pick up wicked traits to, to climb to the top or to get what we want or to control the situation. This is all no good. If you have to lie, exaggerate the truth, manipulate um, divide people in order to get what you want. Those are things that he detests. So go to Proverbs 6. This is the most I've yawned on anyone. 
This is crazy. The wind was blowing so hard. My electricity kept acting like it wanted to go out. It's flicked off, flicked on and off so many times. Um, that I almost, I thought I wasn't going to be able to do it, but okay. Mm. Okay, I'm going to start with verse 12. A not, so Proverbs chapter 6, starting at verse 12. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with, it, with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart, he deviseth mischief continually he soweth discord therefore shall his calamity come suddenly calamity comes suddenly suddenly shall he be broken without remedy so suddenly these people who have been doing wicked things being deceitful and tricking people and stealing from people and all all that stuff plotting mischief Calamity will come suddenly. You don't want to find out that that's you. Okay. Now, verse 16. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and running to mischief, mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Those are considered abominations to the Lord. So being prideful, lying, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, so just sitting there plotting wicked things, Feet that be swift and running to mischief. So first you're devising it in your heart and then you're rushing to do it. He he, he don't like it. And, and lying on people. A false witness that speaketh lies. And then lastly, and he that soweth discord between brethren. So breaking up families, breaking up relationships. A person who does that on purpose. So he considers these things abominations. We need to be, and it's easy to be like, well, I don't do that. I don't do that. Um, a lot of people have pride. A lot of people will lie. And when you do it all the time, that's when it turns into iniquity because that's just having a wicked heart when you do these do things all the time. Like, okay, I I've told the story before. I had this patient was coming in for a follow-up appointment and I came in the room and her computer, her laptop was sitting in the chair, the extra chair. She was in an exam chair. The laptop was in an extra chair. And it was like this thing on the screen that was this, the screen was moving. Like it was this thing on the screen to make it move. And I was like, what's that? She was like, oh no, that's just, um, I'm at work. And so that, that just makes my screen not um, shut down because they can tell. If I my screen shuts down and I said, woman of God, what? I said, you're pretending to be at work and you're not at work. And they're paying you to be at work. That's stealing. She was like, she hadn't thought about it like that. She was a nice lady. I liked her. Right. But she was just like. Hadn't thought about it like that. There's all these little things that over time you've learned to do to just get what you want. But if you were the owner of the company and people were pretending to work and you were paying them, you would have an attitude. Right? You're paying the person to not be working. So it's little stuff. I was at... um. The grocery store, the self-checkout, and I was getting 
kiwis and I was getting the yellow kiwis and they were, they cost more than the green ones. And we were doing a self checkout and it, and they, they, I couldn't find it in the screen and the scanning code wasn't working. And so I typed it in and then it can't, and all the, the only one I could find was the green one. And so then I'm like trying to flag down a person like, Hey, this is not the right price. I, I wasn't about to get in trouble with the Lord over no dollar, over a dollar. But like a lot of times people will just get away, will just do that stuff. It's one thing if somebody gives it to you. It's another thing when you're deceptive and take it. I knew I could have got away with it. Nobody would have known what color it was on the inside of them kiwis, but I knew which ones I grabbed. You know, it's little stuff like that where the Lord started cleaning me up on just having in, having integrity. Like integrity is doing the right thing even when no one's looking. Like integrity is just, you just do the right thing. It's uprightness. Not only do the, not just doing it when somebody's looking over your shoulder, but when you're in private by yourself doing the right thing. So the Lord is trying to clean you up, refine you. And he can't even really start to do that until he gets the, the big stuff handled and you're too busy focusing on what's wrong with everybody else that you're missing what's wrong with you. So that's the word for today. We need to allow the Lord to show us ourselves so that we can get in right standing so that we don't end up at the, at the uh, pearly gates and Jesus like, uh, who you, you can't come here. I don't know you. You don't want that where you were thinking you were doing something so right and you weren't because you were distracted by other people and and stiff-necked and hard-headed and wouldn't listen to what God was trying to warn you about. Then you look up and you got calamity falling upon you all of a sudden. Right now is really a, a crucial time to try to get yourself right with the Lord because I literally think we're on a countdown right now and something bad is going to happen here if we don't come to repentance. So pray for yourself, pray for our country, and let's try to get in a posture that is pleasing to the Lord. Y'all are really quiet tonight. I'm thinking maybe folks didn't want to hear that they need to fix themselves, but it's just true. I just talked to that, to my husband about this, doing all things into the glory of God. That's what counts not for man. He has no righteousness and God is watching you all the time. I'm believing. That's right. Thank you, Denise James. That's absolutely right. He's always watching. When you think you're getting away with something, being slick, he like, she over there stealing again, but she talking about she want to. If he can't trust you with a kiwi fruit or he can't trust you to just be on, just say you got a doctor's appointment. I won't be off for an hour. I need an hour off. Uh, I'm taking my lunch. I'm going to the doctor, whatever. But I'm using my example and the other lady's example of just doing the right thing. It's small things that add up to big things. He's not going to trust you with something big if he can't trust you to be honest about the, the right price of something that's a dollar difference. That's like nothing. He sits high and looks low. Facts. All right. That's the word for today, y'all. So I will see y'all tomorrow. I see y'all tomorrow. Not sure what we're talking about, but we were just saying this today in devotion. Oh, good. See, repent and grow. He assesses us with the little things so he don't give us the big things. Exactly. Exactly. So. All right, friends, sisters in Christ, I will see y'all tomorrow night. I love y'all. Check y'all later. Bye.